There are three areas to consider when looking at data warehousing support in a RDBMS. 1. Data loading. 2. DBMS storage management. And 3. Query processing. 11.70 release enhanced these areas to make Informix a very viable platform for data warehousing. The features listed in red are the features that were added in 11.70. While all the features are well documented in our manuals and papers, I will highlight just a few in this presentation. An important part of managing data in a data warehouse is the ability to add or drop a fragment in an automated fashion. Most retailers have the need to store a certain number of intervals of data, usually by month, but it could be by week or perhaps by year. When the new interval of data comes in, the system should automatically add a new segment and releases the oldest one to maintain a total number of intervals desired like 24 or 36. 11.70 now provides this capability to provide the time cyclic data management discussed in the last slide. IDS 11.7 now contains a feature called interval fragmentation. As shown in the SQL create table command below, the fragment by range clause allows one to specify a fragment key. In this example, it is the order date. The interval clause then allows one to specify an MTOIM interval, read as number to year month interval, where the interval value expression of one means that a new interval is automatically created each month. By changing the value to 2, it tells the system to create a new interval every two months. Of course, if month is changed to year, then the interval is by year. Notice that spaces can be specified to spread the intervals across different spaces. The rest of the partitions, for example P0, specifies values belonging to a certain date range can be kept in a given partition. This is useful for older data that needs to be kept but that smaller intervals, for example by month, is not necessary. Now on the query processing side of 11.70, we made some significant improvements in handling star schema queries. The first one involves the use of multi-index scan. As an example, we look at the following relatively simple query against a single table, the customer table. The reason this is significant is because this is a very common warehousing type of query that most systems designed for OLTP will not handle well. In particular, we are talking about low selectivity queries. Low selectivity in optimizer term means that for a particular predicate, or where condition, it is not very selective, implying that many rows will qualify. A typical example is the condition of gender equals male. For a customer table, this could on average, return half the rows in the table. And if this is a phone company, for instance, this could return millions of rows, even the rest of the predicates, for example income category equals high are not selective. Let's see how a system would process such a query. Prior to 11.70, Informix would evaluate this query by retrieving the rows based on the most selective constraint, followed by a sequential evaluation of each of the other constraints. As one can imagine, this results in retrieving a large number of rows. For example, if education level is deemed most selective, then all rows that match the education level constraint are retrieved followed by a successive row-by-row row constraint evaluation, that is of gender, income category and zip code. A 10 million row customer table that has 4 unique education levels would still return 2.5 million rows. What's worse is that even if there are indexes on the other columns, they will not be used. With 11.70, we can now take advantage of multi-index scan. One can now set up a different index for each column. The system then uses each index to retrieve a list of rows that qualify and represent them in a bitmap. Then using the end operator to merge the bitmaps to produce a qualifying set of bits representing the rows for the qualifying rows. We further optimize the retrieval by sorting the row ID list before going in to retrieve the rows in a sequential manner. Also very easy to provide count often found in queries by just counting the bits. The previous example shows how 11.70 can speed up queries using multiple indexes on a single table. But the main performance advantage of warehouse queries involves the joining of data between fact table and dimension tables. In this example, we see that a typical way to join a fact table, usually large, with a dimension table, usually much smaller, 
involves what's known as a hash join. Other common join methods are nested loop join or sort merge join. A hash join builds a hash table with the values in the smaller table, then uses it to probe values on the larger table, providing a predictable lookup time. Hash joins can overflow to disk if there is insufficient memory. This example will show the how the new pushdown hash join feature in 11.70 can significantly speed query response for typical warehouse queries involving joins to the fact table. Assume that we have a fact table, F, with 1 million rows. In this example, we will use a selectivity of 1 slash 1000, that is 0.01. This means that on average, a query to this fact table will select about 1,000 rows. Further assume that there are three dimension tables, D1, D3, each with 10,000 rows and a default selectivity of 1 slash 10, that is 0.1, which means that each will return about 1,000 rows as well. Prior to 11.70, a query involving the join of the fact table with all three dimension tables would look like the following. Hash join between D1 and F where the whole fact table is scanned and joined with D1. Note that the intermediate result after the hash join contains 100,000 rows. This result is then joined with D2 where 1k rows are scanned from D2 and joined, resulting in 10k rows as the intermediate result. The final hash join is then performed with D3, returning the result. While this left deep tree method is successful, a lot of data is scanned and intermediate result is large resulting in high memory consumption and long elapsed time. In 11.70, we take advantage of the multi-index scan, as discussed previously, to reduce the number of rows being scanned from each of the dimension tables. By doing so, we push down the join keys to the fact table and reduces the rows scanned from the fact table to 1k, instead of 1m in the previous slide, thus reducing the number of rows retrieved from the fact table and reducing the number of rows in each intermediate join to 1k rows. This is called the right deep tree method and provides significant savings in memory consumption and response time.